How do and welcome back. My name is Andrew Hancock and I'm a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with the VMware products uh, since their inception in 1998. So that's 23 years I've been working with the VMware product line. Some of you may say if you cut Andy in half, it reads VMware like a sticker rock from Blackpool. I've also written over 100 articles for Experts Exchange and won many other awards and accolades. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert program for the last 11 years and more recently a VMware vExpert Pro for the last two. Welcome back to part four um, in this series of um, VMware vSphere uh, videos uh, to support the Hancock's VMware half hour series and to support all the articles I've written on Experts Exchange. So in part three, um, just to recap, we created a virtual image of our CD-ROM. In my particular case, I created an ISO virtual image of this Microsoft Windows 2000 Advanced Server CD. And that's been waiting uh, on the hard disk of this laptop uh, for me to upload to a VMware data store for use with the VMware vSphere hypervisor ESXi7. Um, using the vSphere host client and checking its MD5 signature is correct so that we can actually basically prove to ourselves that the the image that we've already created we've checked the MD5 signature that we have recorded and then we're going to upload that to the SXI host server and then we're going to check the signature again to validate that that ISO is correct. Um, obviously we're going to use these ISOs later uh, in part six, seven. Uh, when we actually create our first Windows virtual machine and our first Linux virtual machine. Um, obviously this is based on the host server that I'm using here which is our Dell PowerEdge R730 which we installed ESS, ESXi, I put my teeth back in, ESXi 7U2, 7.0.2 um, in part one. So the first thing we need to do um, is to connect to our ESXi host server. Um, I've already connected to the host server. This was covered in part two. So if you need to familiarize yourself, then just pop back to the article that I've written previously or pop back to the video to see how we do that. So um, here we are connected via the host client to our ESXi host server. This may look familiar to you and I'm going to expand storage and you can actually basically see the the data store that we created in part two and if you look down here I've still got that data store hanging around called Rust which is our spinning Rust HDD data store and this was the data store that we created in part two uh, where I actually I did actually rename it uh, and created ESX 007 underscore local one underscore VMFS 6 as Kenai amongst you may have noticed that I've renamed that uh, in line with the server, which is called ESXi007. And of course, here we are connected to the host using an FQDN. Not gonna say any more about DNS, DNS, DNS. Um, so, uploading an ISO. I've already got my ISOs on my local disk. You may notice that there are two others. Uh, there's an Ubuntu 2004 and there's a Windows Server 2019. Uh, we're going to be using those in part six and part seven. Um, so come back to part six, part seven, and uh, we'll show you how to install those as virtual machines. So I'm going to upload them now so I don't have to do them again. So first thing we do is click the data store and we then click the data store browser button. And that just basically opens up a browser view of the data store. Um, I actually like to keep all my ISOs in a folder called ISOs. You could create, you could call it what you like, but I like to create, call it ISOs. Uh, create directory, uh, old word for a folder, create a folder or a directory. Uh, highlight that directory and click the upload button. And I'm gonna actually gonna select, at the moment, I'm gonna select the larger um, five gig DVD image because that takes a while to, to, to spin up uh, and I'm going to click open. Uh, so you can actually basically see here there's a progress indicator 2%, 3% and here there's a progress indicator indicating 4%. Now I'm going to leave that chug along in the background and I'm going to basically uh, flick to 
are IDRAC. Uh, if you have something like BMC IPMI uh, or integrated lights out with HPE, then you can connect to your server um, that way. If you don't, uh, then you could connect to your server or stand at the console of your server using a KVM or just a, a keyboard and mouse. Um, I don't have a keyboard and mouse connected into the rack uh, because we use uh, lights out management or out of band management basically to access our servers. So we want to log into the server and obviously we're going to use the root account that we used previously and obviously that password that we recorded. And I actually basically want to select troubleshooting options. And I want to enable the ESXi shell. ESXi shell disabled by default for security reasons. So I'm just going to hit enter to enable that shell. I'm then going to basically on the keyboard, I'm going to hit the alt key and the F1 key. And that would actually basically take me to a separate screen with a login prompt. If you don't enable the ESXi shell, you will not get the login prompt. So again, I'm going to use the super user root and the password that obviously we've remembered. And that will actually basically give me a shell. Um, looks very similar to a Unix or a Linux shell. Um, now this is where people basically, I'm sure, are probably going to start getting really concerned that we're doing a deep dive into our ESXi server. Um, and they're going to get a little bit concerned about basically typing commands because there's no GUI here. You know, we are free text command line where we actually start typing commands. But these commands are quite simple. The first command I'm going to type is CD. CD, change directory. So I'm going to type CD backslash VMFS backslash volumes. This is where all our data stores um, live or are mapped or linked to. I'm then going to basically use the list command ls dash al and that's actually basically going to show us our data stores so there you go you can see rust spinning rust hdd data store and there's that magical esxi 007 underscore local one underscore vmfs 6 which we created in part two so i'm going to type cd again cd and uh esxi has um similar to linux and unix uh, auto complete type feature so if I just type the first couple of letters, I can then hit the tab key and it will basically auto fill the rest. Just saves me a bit of typing. And I'm going to do ls al again. And there we can see at the very bottom, we can see our ISOs directory or modern day folder. I'm going to type cd again, space ISOs. And I'm going to do ls al. And there you can actually basically see the ISO that has been uploaded. Um, that has completed because I know roughly that's about five gig. So I'm going to go back to our, our GUI, our data store browser, and I'm basically just going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm going to click the upload button. I'm going to highlight the Ubuntu, and I'm just actually basically going to wait for that to upload. Now what I'm going to do as well, I'm just going to disappear back uh, to our screen. Now the command that we actually want to use to generate an MD5 signature so that we can actually basically check it. It's called MD5 sum. So we type MD5 sum followed by the file name. And again, I'm not going to type that big, long file name. I'm going to use autocomplete and it's a five gig file. ESXi server is going to have to go read all those, read all that data in and compute the checksum. So it's going to do a little bit of heavy lifting there. It's going to take a take a couple of minutes and okay you can see basically that it's actually come back uh, with a signature now I actually basically like to um, I just basically memorize the first four numbers 99c9 and the last four 8860 and I'm actually going to basically go to the desktop now I've already actually basically generated these MD5 signatures um, to save a bit of time so you can actually basically see here 99C9 and A860 matches exactly our MD5 signature here. So there you go. We've actually basically uploaded that successfully. There is no corruption. That ISO is pucker and we should be good to go come part six and seven when we actually basically create our virtual machines. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm sorry I'm a bit all over the place here. 
Okay, so our Ubuntu image is uploaded, and I'm just going to do the same with our last Windows 2000 Advanced Server. So I'm going to click OK, I'm going to click OK, and it's actually going to start uploading it. I can actually click close here. That doesn't stop the upload. The upload's still going to continue. You can see that it's still running here. And I'll wait for that to complete. Okay, so we're now actually basically finished at present with the host con with the host client. So I'm just going to minimize that. And I'm actually basically going to select our iDRAC virtual console again. So I'm going to do an ls-al list and you can actually see all our ISOs that are present. So I'm going to do the same thing, MD5 sum, and I'm going to basically use the Ubuntu image. I use tab there as well to auto completely. It does actually sort of kind of become habit um, after a while. So if we actually basically look at the first four numbers, F3, A3, and EEAF, and I actually basically have a little look at what was computed, and F3A3 and EEAF. So, good. We, we know that we've got a pucker, good, valid ISO for Ubuntu. Finally, MD5 sum. Now this is gonna be fairly quick. You know, this image is only about 300 to 400 meg. Uh, so basically 0C54 and 778D. And again, if we actually basically look, 0C54 and 778D. Okay, so let's just have a little quick recap and a quick summary of what we've done there. Um, we've created MD5 signature um, of the original ISOs that we created in part three. Pop back to part three if you're a little bit, don't quite follow uh, what we did there. Um, those are already stored on our, on our hard disk. Uh, we've then connected to the ESXi host server using web browser. We've logged in. Uh, we've then opened up the data store with the data store browser. Uh, we've then selected those images and we've uploaded them to our ESXi host. And then here, I've actually basically used iDRAC, the virtual console, to log in to the host. But before we did that, we enabled the ESXi shell uh, using the menu. Um, and then we've logged in to the shell and we've used some commands CD to change directory LS to list the contents of the directory and we've used MD5 sum to generate the MD5 signatures on our host to confirm that they're all correct so congratulations you've successfully uploaded an ISO to a VMFS data store for use with ESXi 7 um, so come back in part five whilst we can continue our journey uh, through these videos uh, so for the time being stay safe all the best goodbye